We all know we need to garden, but what happens when you can't get items to keep the pest away because of shortages or when the poop hits the fan? And let's also talk a little about multiple uses for cornstarch. And I have some big news for you. This is episode 746 of the Prepper website podcast, where I connect you with resources that will help you live a more self-reliant life so you can love your people, get prepared, and live free. Today's episode how to make hot pepper and garlic spray to protect your plants naturally, and 23 clever uses for cornstarch. I'm Todd Sepulveda. This podcast is an audible version with some commentary of articles that can help you get ready for a better future. All article links and show information can be found in the show notes. Hey, are you looking to up your preparedness knowledge? Don't spend time bouncing around the internet for the best preparedness content. Instead, sign up for the top preparedness articles and get them right in your email. For $5 a month, you can get the top preparedness articles from around the internet sent to your email weekly. You can choose to read them or drop them in the Pocket app and have them read to you as you go about your day. The Buy Me a Coffee link to the top preparedness articles is in the show notes. Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode. Hey, I'm dealing with a little bit of allergies and I'm stopped up a little bit, so hopefully you can uh, bear with me on this one. Hey, I said I had some news for you at the very beginning of this episode, and maybe you have noticed some changes to the opening of the podcast. Here's the deal. I'm rebranding. The new podcast is going to be called the Ready Your Future Podcast. This is going to happen in a few weeks. So I'll have a lot more information for you in this week's Prepvotional. But if you want to do a little exploring, you can check out the links in the show notes because I've transferred a lot of the links over to the new website that will kind of be the hub for everything. Again, I'm going to be rebranding to the Ready Your Future podcast. And so uh, you can know that at some point here in the near future, the podcast art and also the name of the podcast is going to change. You don't need to change anything else. You're still going to be subscribed. All that good stuff is going to happen. It's, you're just going to see some changes in the name and in the cover art. Hey, with that said, I always do appreciate when you rate and you review this podcast. And so I'm very grateful for all of you that do that. Uh, it's a true blessing to me. And it's also a real big help for those who are trying to get ready and, and better prepared. And so as they're looking around the internet, they see that, you know, hey, this this specific episode or this specific, I'm sorry, podcast has more stars and reviews and all that good stuff. And so they really look into it and, uh, you know, they'll, they'll come and check it out. So greatly appreciate all of you that have left uh, ratings and left reviews uh, all over the internet on the different podcast networks. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into our first article of this episode. It comes to us from Old World Garden Farms. I really love this website, and they do a lot of great work and uh, provide a lot of great information. And so this article is entitled, How to Make Hot Pepper and Garlic Spray to Protect Your Plants Naturally. I think this is a big deal, because, and I've shared this before, because one of the things... I try to do is think the long term. So I think, you know, there's some short term benefits to being ready and being prepared, but then also what happens later on down the road. So we get so used to uh, our, you know, the things that we can buy at Home Depot or at Lowe's or, you know, our our local uh, hardware store to help us garden. But at some point you might not be able to get that. I mean, we're also talking in the preparedness community about, uh, the lack of fertilizer. I and mean, it's not, not just the preparedness community. You're hearing about that on in the mainstream media, right? About how it's going to be hard to get fertilizer and then big farms and, and, you know, big producers are going to have issues, you know, bringing produce to market. And so you can imagine that if they're going to have issues, we possibly would have issues with that type of stuff. But then also, you know, how do you protect your plants? Because now, the the need to make sure that your garden is going to produce is so much more important and it's so easy for pests to come in and infiltrate and listen if you're not uh, if you're one of those that try to put a garden on uh just on automatic you know and you got the automatic watering and you have all that kind of stuff going on and you're not going out there on a regular basis to check it out when pests get in there and little insects get in there they start 
or wrecking havoc, and they can do that really, really quickly. So what can you do when you're in that type of situation where you can't find all the things that you need to be able to protect your plants? What can you do? And not only that, do it naturally, where you're going to be able to feel good about the, the garden produce that you're producing. So anyway, this is a great article, great information. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Again, from Old World Garden Farms, how to make hot pepper and garlic spray protect your plants naturally. Here we go. One of the best ways to protect your annuals, perennials, and shrubs naturally from both insects and animal attacks is by making and using your very own homemade hot pepper and garlic spray. Whether it's keeping rabbits, squirrels, chipmunks, and deer from feasting on your flowers and vegetables, or aphids from attacking your roses, hot peppers, and garlic spray can help keep pests away. And best of all, without having to resort to harsh chemical sprays. Not only is it easy to make at home, it also happens to be quite inexpensive to create and use, especially if you happen to have your own supply of hot peppers and garlic on hand. So although proper fencing will help to stop most animals, it can be costly to install. And unless you are going to net every square inch of your planting space with fine mesh, insects can still find a way to your plants as well. That is exactly where hot pepper and garlic spray can come to the rescue. Both have pest repelling qualities that work naturally to keep insects and animals away. We have been using the repelling power of hot peppers for years to help protect our garden and flower beds, not just with our spray, but by planting them strategically throughout our garden and bed spaces. Each year, we plant our favorite hot pepper plants on the outer rows of the garden as a barrier. We also space and plant a few ornamental hot peppers throughout our flower beds as well. Why? Because not only do they provide incredible color to the garden and flower beds, they also help protect the plants that grow around them. Without fail, each year, we see a few small nibbles early on a few of our hot pepper plants. Sometimes they even take a small test bit of the peppers, and then magically it stops. Apparently, after a bit of the heat, the animal simply wants no part of the heat. In most cases, it also helps keep them from eating other nearby plants as well. So I really like that idea of keeping it on the outskirts and the, the animals, uh, you know, they're like, okay, all this whole area has got to be nothing but these hot pepper plants. And so I can only imagine seeing, you know, an animal or a rabbit, right? Eating into a pepper and then freaking out and like, hey, where's the water? Anyway, it's in that same heat that when soaked into a liquid and sprayed on the foliage of plants that helps to protect them as well. And when you add in the repelling qualities of garlic to the mix, the spray is even more effective. So we have always found it easiest to mix up our spray one gallon at a time. Old milk jugs make for the perfect holding vessel. They can be easily capped and stored safely out of the way when not in use. Remember that once made, the solution is quite hot and can burn the skin and eyes if it comes in contact with them. For this reason, always keep stored safely from children and pets. Once mixed, the solution will stay potent for up to two to three months without worry. The recipe below creates a single gallon of spray mix. It can, however, be easily adjusted to make more or less by adjusting the amounts of peppers and garlic. Simply adjust the ingredients in equal proportions as you go. When it comes to what variety of hot pepper to use, the sky really is the limit. We have had success using everything from cayenne peppers to jalapeno, serrano, and even our five color Chinese hot peppers. One thing is for sure, the hotter the better when it comes to deterring pests. We are often asked if it is better to use fresh or dried peppers for the mix. The answer is that both seem to work equally well at soaking into the water to create a potent mix. We prefer using fresh when we have them on hand simply because they are usually quite plentiful and free. The ratios are a bit different for using pepper flakes to whole peppers. We have included the amounts needed below for whichever you choose. As for the garlic, it is best to stick with fresh garlic in clove form. Although you can purchase garlic powder, we have never found it to be as potent or effective. All right, so here is the recipe for hot pepper garlic spray. So the ingredients is one gallon of water, 10 to 12 hot peppers chopped fine or five tablespoons of hot pepper flakes and cayenne works well for dry, 10 individual cloves of garlic chopped fine 
and one teaspoon of olive oil. So begin by adding the peppers, garlic, and water into a large pan and bring them up to a simmer. Simmer for about 15 minutes, occasionally stirring the mixture. If you are using hot pepper flakes, you can heat them for a few minutes dry in a pan to help release the oil before adding to the water mix. Heating the liquid helps to release and infuse the oils from the hot peppers and the garlic into the water. Let the mixture cool and allow to sit and marinate at room temperature for 24 hours. Next, strain the peppers and garlic out from the mix and place the liquid into a gallon jug or a container that can be sealed. Add in the teaspoon of olive oil and stir or shake to help disperse the oil through the mixture. The olive oil helps the mixture stick to the plants when sprayed. You can also use a few drops of mild dish detergent or vegetable oil in place of the olive oil if you prefer. Now you are ready to use the hot pepper and garlic spray. The best way to cover the foliage of the plants for protection is with a fine mist from a sprayer. You can use a handheld spray bottle for a small area or a large pump style sprayer when covering bigger areas. We love using a hand pump pressure sprayer because it produces a super fine mist that coats leaves using far less solution. And there is a link here to a hand pump pressure sprayer. It is best to apply the solution in the early morning or late evening when the sun is not beating down on the plants. Applying the liquid during the heat of the day can burn foliage with the moisture and sun's rays. With hot pepper and garlic spray, it is important to reapply after any rain or watering of the plants. Once the solution has been washed off the foliage, it will lose its effectiveness. It is best to reapply every three to five days, even without rain, to keep the potency high. Just as when making the solution, gloves and proper protective gear should be worn to protect skin and eyes from the spray. One final note. If you are using the spray to protect vegetables that will be picked within a day or two, be sure to rinse off any of the hot pepper residue before consuming. That would be fun, right? All right, here's to adding a little spice to your landscape and to keeping pests away with an all-natural approach. Happy gardening, Jim and Mary. All right, guys, I love this because it's so simple. It is so simple to do and so simple to implement and can really save your garden and get you the produce and, and the vegetables that you want. So I uh, highly recommend, you know, this is one of those that you want to grab and you want to, if you're not using right away, you want to be able to put in a gardening notebook and you want to be able to use for, you know, later on down the road. And so, uh, you know, I, I think that, this is going to be one of those that can be used for uh, long term too, if if things go to poop. And so you'll need some garlic, and and maybe you know, I'm wondering if you know you can buy big containers of uh, you know garlic that's already pressed together. I'm wondering if that will work. Um, that might be something to consider. And then the pepper flakes too. If you're not a big fan of peppers, but I would think that there is a lot of healing properties to like cayenne peppers. And so you might want to grow a couple of those just to have those uh, are available for you. And so you can, even if you're not going to consume them to eat, you can use them for many different, different reasons there. So anyway, this is a great article. Uh, like I said, this is one to, uh, to keep and make sure that you are aware of later on in the future, if not using it right now. So again, that's Old World Garden Farms. I'm going to link to this one in the show notes, like always, so you can go and check it out. All right, so when I saw this article, I was like, I love these types of articles uh, because it talks, you know, it takes one ingredient and provides so many different uses for it. And when in the in the preparedness community, when we're talking about, you know, being frugal and we talk about multiple uses of things and, and, and this is just one of those that, that I really appreciate. And there's a lot of items that work like this, right? Vinegar, apple cider vinegar. I mean, there's just a lot of things out there that uh, you there are multiple uses for. And again, when I see one of these come through, this is this is one that I want to read. So this is coming to us from homesteadsurvivalsite.com. The article, again, is entitled 23 Clever Uses for Cornstarch. Cornstarch is not very expensive, and so you can keep a whole lot of it in your in your uh, in your pantry right in your storage so uh, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about this one and uh, let's see what we have here 
So many of us have a box of cornstarch on our pantry shelves. However, if your supply remains tucked away until you need it for a holiday gravy, a pie recipe, or a special casserole, you are missing out. Cornstarch is one of those staples with many other uses in the home other than its well-known role as a thickening agent in the kitchen. This article explores 23 clever uses for cornstarch. So what is cornstarch? As its name implies, cornstarch is a white powdery substance made from the endosperm of dried and ground corn. First developed in 1844 in New Jersey, cornstarch is produced today in the U.S., Brazil, China, and India. Cornstarch is composed of starch molecules which unravel and swell when moistened and heated. This gelatinization process is what makes the substance excellent as a thickening agent. Cornstarch is a gluten-free alternative to wheat flour thickeners used in gravy and sauce recipes. Another advantage of its use in gravies, sauces, soups, pies, and other recipes is that its gels is transparent and nearly flavorless. So here's some clever uses for cornstarch. Number one, ease insect bites and stings. Make a paste by making, mixing three tablespoons of cornstarch with one tablespoon of water. Place the paste over the painful area and let it dry. Leave it on overnight to relieve pain and swelling. Number two, untangle knots in shoelaces, necklaces, and strings. Simply sprinkle a stubborn knot with a bit of cornstarch to loosen it. That's a good one there. All right, number three, absorb furniture polish residue. If traces of polish and oil remain on your furniture after cleaning, you can sprinkle the surface with a little cornstarch, then wipe and buff the surface. What about remove carpet stains? Make a paste with cornstarch and milk. Apply the paste to ink, wine, blood, and other troublesome stains on your carpet. Allow it to dry for several hours, then vacuum. As with other modes of carpet cleaners, it's best to try this remedy on a small, out-of-the-way area first. It can protect feet from blisters. So cornstarch can help provide a barrier between your feet and your shoes. You can sprinkle cornstarch directly into your shoes or onto protective foam pads. Number six, make DIY matte nail polish. Mix a small amount of cornstarch with your favorite nail polish to create a matte finish. All right, that's for all the ladies out there. Number seven, reduce or even remove ironing scorch marks. Dampen the scorched area of clothing before sprinkling it with cornstarch. Let it dry and then brush the cornstarch away. All right, that's an interesting one right there. Make finger paints and other fun stuff. Now, this would be a good one for kids to do, especially in the summertime as a project. So here's how to make finger paints with cornstarch. Mix together one-fourth cup of cornstarch and two cups of cold water. Bring the mixture to a boil and continue boiling until it thickens. Pour the substance into several small containers and add a different food coloring to each one. Another idea is to make your own slime or oobleck with cornstarch. Here's all you need to do. Add a few drops of food coloring to one cup of water. Mix water with two cups of cornstarch. Press the substance into a ball with your hands and watch it return to a liquid state when you let go. Store in a lidded plastic container in the refrigerator until next time. Please note, slime can clog your drain, so throw it in the trash, not in the kitchen sink. So I bet kids would love that one right there. All right, number nine, use a substitute for eggs. Making a cake or other recipe that calls for eggs and you're all out, you can substitute cornstarch for eggs in some baked goods. One tablespoon of cornstarch dissolved and mixed well with three tablespoons of water roughly matches the consistency of an egg. All right, that's a good one there. Number 10, freshen stale smelling rugs and carpets. Sprinkle cornstarch on your carpeting and then vacuum for a fresher scent. Number 11, treat stains on table linens and clothing. If you act quickly, you can use cornstarch to remove blood, grape juice, red, red wine, and other hard to remove stains with a cornstarch and water paste. Cover the spot with the paste and then rub it gently into the fabric. After it dries, brush off the paste, repeat if necessary. What about making a dry shampoo? Cornstarch will soak up hair oil, making it useful as a dry shampoo ingredient. Combine two parts cornstarch with one part baking soda. Lightly dab the mixture on your hair roots, then brush it through thoroughly. 
Number 13, detangle and freshen pet hair. So sprinkle cornstarch on your shaggy doggy's coat to help keep out tangles and keep it fresh smelling between baths. Brush thoroughly. Number 14, make a kid-friendly paste. Mix three tablespoons of cornstarch with about four tablespoons of water to make a construction paper paste for kids' art projects. Kids can use their fingers to apply the paste or try a wooden popsicle-style stick. All right, number 15 is create your own deodorant. Since cornstarch absorbs moisture, you can use it to make a DIY chemical-free deodorant. All you need to do is combine equal amounts of cornstarch and baking soda. Then use a makeup brush or a cotton ball to apply the mixture to your underarm area. All right, that might be something that some people can, you know, some people can't use regular deodorants and they're allergic to it and they break out with stuff like that. And this might be something that you can use. Number 16, get rid of roaches. All right, mix equal parts of cornstarch and plaster of pears and sprinkle the result mixture into cracks and crevices or anywhere you have seen cockroaches in your home. The cornstarch attracts them, but the plaster of pears kills them. Note, plaster of pears is poisonous to humans as well, so use with caution. All right, that's the interesting one there. Never heard of that one. Number 17 is shine silver. Rub a thick paste of cornstarch and water on your silver. Allow it to dry before buffing with a soft, dry cloth. Number 18, clean windows and glass. Mix two tablespoons of cornstarch, half a cup of ammonia, and half a cup of white vinegar into a three or four quart bucket of warm water. The solution will look milky in color. Pour the solution into a spray bottle, spray on windows, rinse with fresh water, and then rub dry with a lint-free cloth. Number 19 is you can freshen up stuffed animals. So place a well-loved stuffed animal into a bag, sprinkle cornstarch into the bag, close the bag tightly, and shake. Brush off the cornstarch. All right, number 20, prevent athlete's foot. Sprinkle cornstarch in your shoes to help absorb moisture. All right, number 21, and this might be helpful for you, especially during the summertime, soothe sunburn pain. Gently dab sunburned skin with cornstarch and a water paste. Allow it to dry before gently brushing off. Another idea is to sprinkle cornstarch on your bed sheets to reduce friction that can hurt sunburned skin while you sleep. So you can imagine, I can just imagine someone just waking up covered in cornstarch. I don't know about putting it all over the bed sheets, but uh, some people have such severe sunburn pain that they might be willing to make a little paste and put it on them to help soothe uh, that, that pain there. All right, number 22, separate marshmallows. Do you know how marshmallows have that annoying habit of sticking together in their bag? You can solve the problem by adding a teaspoon of cornstarch to the bag. Close the bag and shake to loosen the marshmallows. And number 23, moisturize irritated skin so you can use cornstarch as one of the ingredients for a soothing milk bath mix together two cups of whole powdered milk half a cup of cornstarch and half a cup of baking soda in a sealable container cover the container and shake until well blended then remove the lid and add about 10 drops of your favorite essential oils before shaking some more Allow the mixture to sit for 24 hours before using. Then pour one to two cups of the mixture into a warm running bath water. Store the remaining mixture in a cool, dry, uh, dark place. All right, that's an interesting one right there. All right, so you can find cornstarch in the baking section of any supermarket or grocery store. A 16-ounce container uh, usually costs less than $2. Or if you are inspired by the many uses you've read, you can purchase it in bulk quantities. There's a couple of links here that you can check out. You can also find cornstarch made from non-GMO corn online and in natural food stores in natural food sections at the supermarket. So since cornstarch absorbs moisture, it is necessary to store it in an airtight container and in a cool and dry location. When it is stored correctly, cornstarch will last indefinitely. All right, so there's a lot of those uh, these uses here that are interesting. Uh, I like the the one for the dry shampoo. I think that could be helpful, especially in a situation where maybe you don't have water, but you need to stay uh, stay clean. You want to make sure you have clean uh, hair. 
Uh, the other one is the untangling of knots and shoelaces and, and, and strings and, and all that kind of stuff. I like that idea. It would be kind of cool to have that just in the back of your, you know, in your back pocket and uh, someone struggling with something, even a necklace. You know, uh, the other day I was struggling with a necklace and I'm like, man, you just put a little bit of uh, cornstarch on it and that would help to uh, to release it and then you know we always are looking if you're having if you have foot issues you go to the drugstore and you buy you know whatever it is to help you there but knowing that you can use cornstarch in in some and i would be very careful about how much you put in a shoe or you know even if you were to spread it on your feet or whatever i would be very careful to how much you do that but I, I think that's important where it can you know absorb moisture and stuff like that um and i think that's that's kind of cool all right, guys. So like always, I'm going to link to this one in the show notes as well. And you can go check it out and check out all the links that are there for this one. Clever uses for cornstarch. And like I said, I love articles like that. that should give you just a lot of uses for one type of product. Um, some of the other things that we talked about in there, like ammonia and baking soda and vinegar. I mean, all those have multiple uses and uh, we can, we can use, you know, talk about those in the future. And I have talked about those in past episodes as well. All right, guys, let me end with this. If you enjoy listening to podcasts, you will enjoy listening to audiobooks. I use audible as my app and audio store of choice. If you don't have audible, you can join free for 30 days. You can enjoy listening to Audible, Originals, Podcasts, Sleep Tracks, and Audiobooks. If you are already an Amazon Prime member, you will get two free audiobooks to keep, even if you don't keep the membership. So to get more information, visit audiopreps.com. And I have also listed a few audiobooks there that I have listened to if you need some ideas. Again, that is audiopreps.com or click the link in the show notes. And guys, I'm, I'm going to tell you that audiopreps.com does go to the new website. And so if you've clicked on that one before and you just want to go check out the new site, you can go to audiopreps.com. Well, everyone, that's it for episode 746. To subscribe to the show, make sure you click the subscribe button in your favorite podcast app. And that way you never miss another episode of Sweet Goodness. And lastly, don't forget to join the email list if you haven't. When you do, I'm going to send you a free PDF on 25 handpicked preparedness articles that you should read. And with that, choose to live a more self-reliant life. Choose not to be so dependent on the government grid or the grind. Until next time, live with no regrets and stay prepped and aware. Peace.